my name is Yong Chang. My book is called Empress Dowager Cixi, the Concubine Who Launched Modern China. I first got interested in Empress Dowager Cixi when I was researching wild swans more than 20 years ago. Um, my grandmother had bound feet, crushed and bound feet. And from my education in communist China, where I grew up, um, I thought somehow foot binding was uh, banned by the communists. And then in my research, I realized that actually it was the Empress Dowager who banned foot binding at the beginning of the 20th century. And then I was writing my biography of Mao. Um, and in my research, I was astonished by the kind of freedom and the opportunities Mao, the young Mao, enjoyed during Cixi's time and in her legacy. Mao could write on whatever subject he was interested in for very free press, and he could travel around the country with his girlfriends, checking into hotels, and the kind of sexual and intellectual freedom I couldn't dream of having when I was growing up under Mao. Um, so I sort of got interested in Empress Dowager. And after my biography of Mao was published, friends suggested the writing about her. Her husband and her husband's father and, her, and their parents resisted the open door policy in China. Um, and because of this, um, the British invaders burned down the old summer palace, Yuan Mingyuan. Now, uh, Cixi's husband uh, fled to northern China with the court and with Cixi. Um, there, he was so heartbroken because of the summer palace, old summer palace was burned down. He refused to return to Beijing, and he died in self-imposed exile in the northern wilderness. And his five-year-old son, his son with Cixi, became the next emperor. And at this point, Cixi launched the coup and ousted the eight grandees whom her husband had appointed to supervise the son. If the eight grandees had continued to be in power, China would still be going down the road of a confrontation with the West and, and refusal to open, to open the door of China. But Cixi changed all that. Her coup was very popular because it opened the door of China, and she asked a very intelligent and fresh question, which is, why must we close our door to the West? Why can't we open our door and benefit China itself? The most important thing about the Empress Dowager is that she brought medieval China into modernity. And under her, China had nearly all the attributes of a modern society. You know, she brought in uh, modern ways of mining, modern industries, the railways, the telegraph, the telegram, electricity, um, and a modern uh, kind of a navy and army with, you know, up-to-date um, uh, weaponry, um, and the modern ways of conducting dip diplomacy. History has been very unkind to Cixi for a hundred years. Um, there were many reasons, but I think one main reason was that um, three years after Cixi died, China became a republic. And the Republicans, first the nationalists, then the communists, wanted to blacken her name. People were talking about um, the similarities between the last years of her rule and today's China. I think there is something to that. You know, in both cases, um, the door has been opened for decades, and there have been economic development, and there have been rising um, political aspirations. Um, where do we go from here? The Empress Dowager's answer was to push ahead for political reforms, 
um, under her, there was a free press and there were legal reforms, and uh, she was going to introduce a constitution, a monarchy, and with an elected parliament. In other words, she was going to give the Chinese the vote. And she died when, unfortunately, when the project was just underway. She wanted to be on the right side of history. Um, I think that her determination and, um, and um, why she had made the decision is very interesting for, you know, for people um, in today's China to learn.